Okay, today's reading is Luke 14, uh, verses 25 to 33. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if, it, if, to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundations and not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able to, able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciple. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, the prayer package is here. Step back your hands and let's just pray for time. Thank you. And so, Father, we pray, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. May you continue to anoint Tim the work you've set aside for him to do. And as he delivers your word this morning and leads us into this fresh vision, your vision, for this church, our church. We, Father God, we just pray that you would just anoint those words that are going to come out of his mouth and also open our hearts that we may receive them with joy. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dean. So here we go. The bit you've all been waiting for, to find out what we're actually going to be doing as a church in the not-too-distant future. As I say, I'm going to give you all a copy at the end of the service. Go home, read through it. You're not going to be able to read through it in one go and take it all in. It's a document that I want you to use and to pray over. There's been a lot of prayer and a lot of work that has gone into the document. And just because it's in your hands today doesn't mean that's the end. In fact, it's a new, it's a new beginning. It's a chance for the church now to see what the Lord has been saying, or what we, the PCC feel the Lord has been saying to us, and then we can start looking at how we implement that vision. It's a document that has been in the making for a long, long time, as you all know. We started this journey back in January 2020. Unbeknown to us, we'd have had such a large interruption because of COVID. It's also, and this is really important to say, it's a document that is not set in stone. It is not going to be, this is it for Christchurch for the next three years. It's a document that will be a living document, that will be reviewed, changed, updated. As the Lord speaks to us in different ways and tells us where we're going, we will update the document. So don't think this is it for three years or however long. But it is a document that will be part of the history of this church. 20 years since this building was opened, 30 years since you began meeting, and this document will become part of that history. Fun fact, it's quite interesting. Today, believe it or not, it's three years to the day since I made those oaths before the bishop here on these steps and was licensed as your vicar. It wasn't planned that we were going to be launching the vision three years later, but it is three years to the day. So you put up with me for three years, so well done. <laughs> <laughs> or I put up with you. <laughs> anyway, so I suppose the question really to begin with, if I have not lost my notes, is why a vision? Why is this vision so important? Why have we spent so long talking about the vision? Why have we spent so long exploring Nehemiah, Zechariah, and all the other bits surrounding bits? Well, because without a vision, essentially, we are just walking in the darkness. It's just a case where we think this is right, we think that's right, but nothing is, comes under the same banner. It's about bringing everything that we do as a church 
not just on a Sunday, but throughout the week, together under one vision that what the Lord is calling for us. Now, I'm afraid you're not going to find a witty one-liner in here that sums up the vision because we haven't got one. The PCC have been praying for that since our away day back in February, and we have not received anything from the Lord. So there is not a one-liner that sums up this document. Instead, what we have are five building blocks that we are going to build on over the coming months, continuing that renew, restore, and rebuild There are five building blocks that we feel the Lord is asking asking us to look into. Over the next few weeks on Sundays, I'm going to be digging into those building blocks a bit more and explaining and exploring them in greater detail. But today, if you forgive me, I'm going to give you a quick overview of of them and some of the things that that, that we will be doing. Today marks a transition in the history of the church. And that is really important. It marks a transition. It means that today, I want to encourage each and every one of us to put behind us all the things that have happened. Not to forget. We must never forget. But to put behind us those things that have happened and move forward with excitement as to what the Lord is asking of us now. It's a chance for us to reset. I'm trying to avoid as many R's as I can, but they seem to keep coming. It's a chance for us to reset And think about who are we as a church? And perhaps more importantly, who should we be as a church? This will not happen without the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not a launch and next week we go back to the way things were. That's not what this is about. It's about launching today and inviting the Holy Spirit in and then changing how we do things. It's not a change in theology. It's not a change in the fundamental principles that we believe in as Christ Church. But it is, and it's not a change in our values either, but it is a change about how we go about those things. Now, you're probably all sat there thinking, oh, change, because in any church, it's who wants, cha- who, wants to, who wants change? Everybody puts their hands up. Who wants to change? Nobody puts their hands up. We've talked a lot about change. I don't want you to go into this apprehensive about the changes that are going to happen. Because, it's, you know, Sundays are still going to look like Sunday. But it's how we go about those things, how we work together as the people of God in this place. That's what this is about. All of this work that we've done since January 2020, when we started with Acts, has led us to this place. And it's a chance not just to reset the church with this new vision, but it's a chance for us to reset our own faith to the Lord, with the Lord, And to make sure that from now on, both this church and our lives have Jesus at the very center of it all. It's easy for me to stand here and say this, I know. It's a lot harder to put that into practice when we get out into the world and we see everything that's going on. It's hard, but this is a chance today to say enough is enough. Jesus, I put you at the center of my life. Jesus, we put you at the center of this church. That's why, as a response to the sermon today, there will be an opportunity to reaffirm our baptism vows. We will say the words together. If you would like to come and receive a sign of the cross with the, with the water, you are very welcome. But we will say those baptism vows that we made or were made on our behalf as a chance to recommit and reset by placing Jesus at the center. The reading we had today is actually the lectionary reading. I haven't chosen that specifically for today. But to me, it fits very well with the vision launch. You might be thinking, but that was a really hard reading. Give up everything and that. But that's the thing. Following Jesus is not easy. Following Jesus in a church is really not easy. Because in the church, we have lots of personalities. We all want to do our own thing. And we can end up in a real muddle. That's why a vision is important. Because everything we do from this moment on will come under that vision. If there are things that we're doing that aren't under the vision, well, they will stop. If there are things that we're doing that aren't quite right, but they need to just perhaps change a little bit, we'll change them. And if there are new initiatives that come up from this document or from our prayers, we will start them up. As I said, it's not when we reaffirm the vows, it's not about committing ourselves to Christ church, because we are part of the worldwide church. We are part of the church of God. We are just one 
example of how we as a group of Christians come together and express our faith. It's about committing to the Lord. Because the vision and the church, we will go through seasons. Changes will happen. The time will come when perhaps we decide it's time for us to go elsewhere. Or it's time for other, and other people might say, it's time for me to come to Christ church. That's okay. If you come to me and say, Tim, I'm not quite happy with this. I'm going to another church. I will say, will you go with my blessing? I'm not going to get on my knees and beg you to stay, friends. That's not what it's about. Because this church is not a club. This church is one expression of the church of God in this world. Our relationship with the Lord is why we do what we do. And if we haven't got our relationship right with the Lord, then we might as well just stop now and quit. Because this isn't going to work without putting Jesus at the center, without allowing the Holy Spirit in to change us. And that's hard. It's about allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work that we, or that we feel he is calling us to do. And if we get it wrong, it's about standing and saying, okay, Lord, I'm sorry, I got that wrong. I will be the first one to stand up here in front of you, friends, and say, I'm sorry, I got it wrong, if I've got it wrong. And I would hope that this church is a safe space where we can do that, where we can say, I'm sorry, I got it wrong, without fear of people then pointing the fingers at us, without fear of people sort of judging us and talking behind our backs. The church should be a place where we go, I'm sorry. That's what I want this church to be. That's what Jesus wants his church to be. A place that is safe for us to take risks, to try things out, to get them wrong, and to try again. It's a place where we want you to come. We want you to come. And when somebody says to you, are you okay? Don't say, I'm fine, if you are not. If somebody says, are you okay? If you are not, say, actually, no, I'm not okay. And then you can have a conversation. There's a wonderful song by Casting Crowns called Shiny Happy People. That's the REM version, isn't it? It's, it's a song by Casting Crowns anyway. And it talks about shiny plastic people. That's right. Because he's basically saying there is a facade that Peter, the Christians put on when they come to church. That they come to church and say, everything's fine. My life is great. Well, let me tell you, friends. I bet if I were to ask you now, I bet quite a few of us would say, well, actually, this part of my life's not quite going that right. I'm struggling. That's what the church should be, a safe space. That's what this church will be. When you look at the document, you might think we've forgotten something very important. Because actually evangelism does not feature very highly in that document. And now there's a collective sigh of relief because that's the word that everybody dreads. But I think that the PCC and I felt that that was right for this season of the church. That this is a chance to focus on what we do here. And that evangelism will probably be the next step that we spend time focusing on us because as we start to focus on ourselves and what we need to do as a church, there is reaching out into the community, don't fear. But as we start to do that, evangelism will happen naturally because people will see the church is active out there. People will see that we can respond to the cost of living crisis. People will see that we can respond to some of the global events that are happening. You might think, how are we supposed to do that? I don't know yet, but I know that the Lord will tell us how we can do that. And that we will respond to situations in the world. Because that's what Jesus would have done. And if that's what he would do, that's what the church should do. So don't read through this and think there's an oversight there because you've missed evangelism. It is not in there. Because as we've been praying, we have felt that the Lord has not said that to us for this season in this time. So the five building blocks. Within the next week or so, you will be receiving as well a bookmark which has these five building blocks on that I want you to place in your Bible, that as you do your daily devotions, that you can look at those building blocks and pray through them. Perhaps take one a day and you've got two days off. Or pray through all five every day if you're really super religious. Well, super faith. Not, and we're not religious. But I want you to do that. And I will be getting some, we'll be getting some new banners. I can say that because the trade That would be as we open up this, this building for the community. As people come in, they can see straight away, this is what Christchurch is about. These five building blocks is what we are about. I've probably talked enough about the building blocks. You want to know what they are now. But as you read it, you will notice there is an overlap. Of course there is. There is always going to be an overlap, but that's good. But it also means that we have to be quite deliberate about different areas of our church life. 
There will be changes happening, as I've said. Today is just a launch. Then the real work starts, believe it or not, as we implement this vision that the Lord has given to us. And yes, we are going to get things wrong, but that's okay. Jesus tells us that unless we give things up, we cannot be his disciple. That's the case when it comes to church. We, none of us sat here, are indispensable. God forbid if something was to happen to one of us, the church would carry on. It's important to remember that because too often we start thinking, well, that will only happen if that's all about me. It's human nature to slip into that mindset, but that's not the mindset that Jesus tells us to be. And we need to be very deliberate about not slipping into that. None of us are indispensable. Nothing ha happens here is down to one person alone. In this new season, I want to encourage us to hold things lightly because it can and never should be about one person. It should be a joy and an honor to serve the Lord in a church. And we should never forget that. And there may be times when I will come to you and say, actually, I think it might be time for you to try something else. That's not because I don't like you. That's not because I think you've done anything wrong. That's because I think it might be a chance for us to discern together. What is the Lord asking of me now? That's why last, last, last year, this year, at Letton Hall, we looked at our giftings. Because I need to know what your giftings are so I can work out where is the best place for you to serve in this church to the glory of God. This is God's church. And we have to remember that through all that we do. So our values, I finally get to them, are five, build, bleh, five building blocks. This church aims to be Christ-centered. We want to love one another, and that needs work, friends. We want to be a community of disciples. We need to be invitational, and we need to be out in the community. They are the five blocks that we will be working on over the coming months. If we are not Christ-centered, then we're not a church. We're a club. As has been said on numerous occasions before, it is Jesus who will build his church, not us. We have to keep him at the center of this. And we need to remember that it's him who has the ultimate authority. It's not us. It's Jesus that has the ultimate authority. And we need to make sure that to be Christ-centered, we are also kingdom-focused. We're not doing this in our own strength. We are holding to the authority of God's word in the Bible. We are holding to scriptural views of, of things like Christian marriage, amongst other things. That is written in here because that, friends, is so important. That is going to split the church, I'm sure. But we hold to what it says in this book because that's, what, that's the word of God. As part of being Christ-centered, there will be a renewed focus on prayer. Hopefully, those of you that read How to Pray Over the Summer found it really useful. I continue going back to that book because it made prayer so understandable for me. There are things that changed my prayer life as I read that book, which is why I recommended it. As a church, we're going to be embarking on the prayer course next week to look at different elements of prayer. Our monthly prayer meetings on a Saturday morning will continue. And if you've not been before, come along to see what it's about. We'll also be starting hearing God's voice because it's not just about us talking to God. We have to listen to what he's saying. Prayer is a two-way conversation, and too often we're very good at speaking but not listening. Hearing God's voice will be beginning next month, where it's a time to deliberately spend time listening to the Lord, and we will be looking at how to hear God, which is part two of How to Pray by Pete Gregg. The encounter will continue as a space to engage with the Lord, to be still and encounter him and be changed by his presence. It's Christ-centered. We have to learn to love one another. We want to be a welcoming church where people feel valued and where we can get things wrong without condemnation. I want this to be a safe space, as I've said, to take risks without fear of failure. It's okay to disagree in the church. Shock horror. It is okay to disagree in the church as long as we disagree well. And that's one thing that the church is not very good at. Not this church, but dare I say it, the Church of England. Look at General Synod. We need to learn to disagree well. Apologies, Bishop, if you're watching. <laughs> we have to hold each other accountable as well. And be open to biblical discipline. We have to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why prayer ministry will continue to be offered at each and every service. So if you, are, if you encounter the Lord and you need prayer, for goodness sake, don't go without receiving prayer ministry. Engage with the Holy Spirit. Listen to his promptings. Be accountable to one another. 
Don't be afraid if somebody says, actually, what you did there, that upset me a bit. That's okay. Talk about it. We're adults. Discipleship has to be at the heart of what we do. It's a lifelong journey. We're all learning things daily as we follow Jesus. We want to put our faith and our trust in him. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to look at offering explorer courses, Alpha, Star, um, I can't remember the other one that's gone out of my head. But we'll be looking at those explorer courses to allow people in the community to come and find out who is this person that you talk about all the time? Who is this Jesus? We'll continue to hold our small groups. And I encourage you, if you're not in a small group, speak to me and we'll, pop you, we'll put you in a small group. Because that is a place where you can be a disciple. That is a place where you can learn more. You can explore more and more deeply than you can on a Sunday. It's a place where you can learn what your giftings are and how you can use them both within and shock horror outside of the church as well. We will look at stewardship and how to encourage appropriate giving because that is part of discipleship, friends. Don't switch off because I'm going to quickly, very briefly talk about money. But it is important, our stewardship and our generosity and how much we give to the church. Particularly as we get towards winter and this cost of living crisis continues to bite, we have to make sure that we are still giving appropriately to the church. Because let me tell you, I can say for a fact, when I stopped giving, I was struggling with finances. As soon as I started giving again, things just seemed to work out really well. That's from a while ago. But there we go. We'll come back to that another time. Our activities will continue that we do in this church, but we will review whether what we are offering is serving its purpose and whether what we are offering is actually promoting the gospel. And if it's not, then it goes. Because if it's not promoting the gospel, it's again, it's too much like a club with a bit of Jesus on the side. It needs to be something that promotes the gospel with Jesus at the center of it. We want to be an invitational church. As we run different events, we want to encourage each other to invite our friends, our family, and our neighbors to the church. We want to invite the community to join us at special events. We want to invite people to come in and see who we are. That actually shock horror, Christians are normal people. We don't have two heads. We're not weird. But we are normal people. <laughs> no, I'm not, no comment. But we want to pe invite people in. We have a fantastic building here. We have a fantastic resource for the community. But so many people walk past and never cross through those doors. We want to change that. We want to invite people in to see what we do, what we have. And that leads into being out in the community, which is the fifth building block. We cannot simply sit back and wait for people to come to us. Because the age of Christendom, that age, is no longer here. We're living in a postmodern world, and it's time for us to mobilize as the army of God and go out there and speak to people outside. Because Jesus tells us in Matthew's gospel, go out into the world and make disciples. He doesn't say, sit in church and wait for them to come. If we sit in church and wait for people, we've got it wrong. This book tells us, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, says, go out and make disciples. And that's what we need to do. So perhaps there is the evangelism there, hey. Friends, that is a whistle-stop tour of what we've been planning, praying, and preparing for. Over the coming weeks and months, we will be implementing things that are listed in here. There's so much more in here. But above all, this document is not about me. This document is not about the PCC. This document is about each and every person who belongs to Christ Church. It's about each of us who are called to serve to get on and do the tasks that are laid out before us. It's about laying down our lives. It's about giving up everything so that we can take up our cross and follow Jesus and put him at the center. It's not going to be easy. I'm not going to try and pretend it's going to be easy. There will be difficulties along the way, I know. It's been hard enough simply get into this stage when we consider all the attacks of the enemy. Even this last week, things have just been constant to try and wear us down. But he has no place in this church, and he has no place in our lives. It's time for us to take a stand and tell him to flee. He has no authority here, because we, in this church, are living in the victory of Jesus Christ on the cross. The church belongs to God. We are merely caretakers and stewards of the church in this time, this place, and this season. We've looked at renewing, restoring, and rebuilding. Now is the time when it truly happens. 
Now is the time when we go all in for Christ, both corporately and individually. This is a turning point in the life of this church, and we will see things happen, I'm sure. The vision is here. The roadmap is laid out ahead of us. It's down to us now to take the steps into this new future. We need to go hand in hand with the Lord as we do that. That's why I'm going to encourage you to come forward and receive the sign of the cross from the font as a reminder of those promises that you made at your baptism or if they were made on your behalf. Once we've done that, I will commission us for the task ahead. It's time, friends, to leave behind the ways of old. It's time to leave behind any bitterness, regret, unforgiveness. It's time to step up and say yes to God. As you come forward, as you pray in your seat, take the time to invite the Holy Spirit in. See what you need to let go of today as we take these steps into this new season together. We can't do this on our own. It's only with Jesus walking before us, behind us, and beside us, and the Holy Spirit within us, that we can move forward united as a family of Jesus Christ. Amen.